So recently, Joy, one of my Patreon and Mineral of the Month Club subscribers, thank you for feeding me, <laughs> asked a very succinct question about this beautiful specimen right here. And I'll paraphrase. What would the general valuation of something like this be, and why? So let's get nerdy. Let's just get really nerdy today, and we're going to deep dive into why a collector might justify to themselves paying this for something like this. Stay tuned. There is a tremendous amount of variety among specimens, even in the same type of mineral. And collectors, curators, hobbyists, etc. are always trying to get their hands on the very best specimen that they can. It's the nature of the beast. Yet there are key factors that diehard mineral collectors take into consideration, and said factors can be applied to more than just the aquamarine specimen we'll discuss today. Let's talk about structures and crystal habits first. There are two key things with this that a serious collector will ooh and ah over. A very bizarre and atypical structure, or a perfect textbook structure. Aquamarine is in the barrel family, and barrels tend to have a very distinct crystal habit. Hexagonal or six-sided with a flat top. A rare structure like, say, a double termination, which is basically points on both ends of the crystal, will likely have a bigger effect on the value. However, this specific specimen has a textbook structure. Just look at how distinct this is. The next key factor that will have a great effect on value is condition. Does that specimen have obvious fractures running through it? Is it missing an entire crystal face because of damage when mining? This particular specimen is in great condition, and that is one of the most important factors. Color is next. This particular specimen has rich and vibrant color. Now, if the specimen had, say, this color, it would raise the value greatly. This is a very desirable color that people love. However, the color of the aquamarine in question is still really good. If it was pale or barely had any color, the value would drop. Clarity. This ties in with color a bit. The more clear and vibrant the crystal, the better. This one has decent clarity. Not the very best, but good. Size. When talking about gemstones, size is pretty important. Some can grow in very large, massive crystals, but gem quality ones like that are quite rare. Plus, more crystal means more opportunities for damage, especially when being mined. Sure, this one's not uh, the Dom Pedro, but as far as what is commonly available on the market, this is a pretty large aquamarine. Smaller crystals, unless they have insane quality or have something that makes them particularly rare, will have less value. Now, you may have noticed there's something black on this crystal, and that's not a bad thing. Those are tourmalines that grew on the crystal. At first glance, they could be either dravite or shoral, but that doesn't really matter at this point. However, since they don't completely encrust the crystal and have a very tasteful effect on it, this has a positive impact on the value. Some mineral collectors are only into multi-mineral specimens. Before we get to the final point, if you made it this far, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel, and it'll greatly help me in the algorithm. And I need all of that I can get. This last point is one that people typically don't take into account. Locality. Where a specimen comes from can have a tremendous impact on the value in the market. For instance, right now a large quantity of aquamarines on the market comes from the Shigar Valley in Pakistan. The market is a little saturated with them. However, this piece is from Arango, Namibia. While a prolific locality, there aren't as many on the market. And it's also a very popular locality for aquamarine crystals. So supply and demand begins to have an effect. While not the case for this particular crystal, a mineral being rare to a locality can also have an effect. 
For instance, uh, there was amethyst that was mined out of the Pea Ridge Mine in Missouri many, many years ago. It is exceptionally rare and will command a much, much higher price than the Brazilian amethyst on the market today. I know you wanted a brief explanation, Joy, but this topic always demands a bit more depth. Keep in mind, my estimate is very conservative. With a lack of comparable specimens floating about, this piece could theoretically fetch twice this amount. But thanks for watching. And please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel. I hope you have a wonderful day.